Okay, so it's the sequel to the most beloved movie of all time, The Wizard of Oz. Rubies to riches. Dorothy designs a line of ruby slippers and boom, strikes it rich. Hard pass. All right. Wizard of Oz Part 2, Twister. Dorothy, Toto, and Aunt Em become professional storm chasers. <sighs> Bring me a club soda with a twist of lemon. And I mean a real twist, not that stuff from the plastic squeeze bottle. Well, what do we have here? Dear Rita and Moby, how do I write a story that people will actually want to read? Thanks, B. I can answer that. Plus, it'll end this fiasco of a pitch meeting. Let's talk structure. Tim, pull up a seat. Every decent story's got a plot, a chain of key events that drive the action. The first event causes the second, which causes the third, and so on till the end. Plots are what draw us in, stir up our emotions, and get us hooked. They make us want to stick with the story to find out what happens next. None of this is new. Some of the rules for effective plot construction go all the way back to ancient Greece. Back then, plays tended to follow a three-part structure, beginning, middle, and end. You start with a conflict, a challenge faced by the main character called the protagonist. In the first half of a story, the conflict escalates. Then there's a reversal and the conflict resolves or clears up. A couple thousand years later, European writers were still following this basic structure, but by then they'd added a few wrinkles of their own. A German writer named Gustav Freitag broke the formula down into five steps. He organized them in a diagram now called Freitag's Pyramid. The plots of most stories can be mapped onto this structure. First up, there's exposition. That's the setup, when the story's characters and setting are introduced. In The Wizard of Oz, the main character is Dorothy. She lives on a farm with her dog Toto and her Aunt Em and Uncle Henry. Dorothy dreams of exciting adventures in faraway lands. Learning what her character wants sets us up for what's to come. Next is the rising action, often set in motion by an inciting incident. In this case, a tornado hits Dorothy's house and carries her away to Oz. It's around this point when we find out the story's main conflict. Dorothy desperately wants to go home, but lots of obstacles... the Wicked Witch of the West, who's the antagonist, the character opposite the protagonist in the conflict. She wants to steal Dorothy's ruby slippers, a gift from Glinda the Good Witch. The rising action tends to take up most of the story. Maybe you've heard the phrase, the plot thickens. That's what happens here. Events build to heighten the conflict and the tension keeps mounting. Dorothy and her pals navigate a haunted forest, facing strange creatures and dodging the witch at every turn. Finally, they reach the wizard, who says he'll help Dorothy get home, but only if she brings him the Wicked Witch's broomstick. Right, Dorothy's big face-off with the witch is the climax. The plot's peak, the most important moment. Following a mighty struggle, Dorothy triumphs by melting the witch. The climax marks a turning point that changes the protagonist. After that comes the falling action, when the conflict is resolved. As it turns out, the wizard is a fraud who can't actually help Dorothy get home. But Glinda the Good Witch can. She explains that Dorothy has the power within herself to go home, with a little help from her ruby slippers. Yeah, that's called a plot device, something dropped in to move the action forward. We knew the slippers were magic, but only at this key moment do we learn they can solve Dorothy's problem. Sometimes, plot devices are too random or unbelievable to work, like a bunch of farmers decide to become storm chasers for no apparent reason. That kind of thing can turn off an audience, disconnecting them from the story. 
Anyway, the last part of the pyramid is the resolution, the plot's final wrap-up. It's also called the denouement. The conflict is solved and the reader feels closure. Dorothy returns to Kansas safe and sound, realizing there's no place like home. Well, you don't want your story to map perfectly onto the pyramid. It's a formula. Track too closely to it and your story will feel formulaic or fake. Like in this phase, you don't want every single moment to add to the tension. In The Wizard of Oz, the plot takes all kinds of fun little detours, like when we meet the scarecrow, tin man, and lion. A little bit of looseness makes a story more lively and engaging. Some writers even mess around with the structure itself. They might skip the exposition and start in medias res, in the middle of things. That can give the story a sense of urgency. Like if The Wizard of Oz started right in the middle of the tornado. The background info might come in later, through flashbacks, scenes from an earlier time inserted in the story. Then it would be a non-linear plot, a story that's told out of order. Sometimes a story begins at the climax, or even the resolution, then backtracks. Other stories might have more than one climax, or no resolution at all. Well, before you try any of those, it's a good idea to master the standard form. When you're planning out your story, map the plot onto the pyramid. Some writers start at the start by imagining the characters and setting. Others envision the climax first, then backtrack to plan the events leading up to it. And some begin with the conflict and then figure out how it escalates and resolves over the course of the plot. Figuring out your plot can be a messy process with lots of false steps and revisions. Kind of the opposite of your finished story, which will be brilliantly structured. Gee, you, you really think so? Sure I do. Now get back to the drawing board and write me a hit, kid. Yes, ma'am. Call me if you need anything, and let's do lunch real soon. How many times have I told you? That guy shows up, call security.